All right, let's talk about Tua's return. Uh, really, you know, the Dolphins' defense was kind of the, the story of this game, but hey, I thought Tua played well in this one. Uh, I'm going to make the video on Tua. He made some mistakes. I will talk about the mistakes, but as a whole, I thought this was a good performance from Tua. They were able to survive at the end there, so let's just jump into it. Let's start off with this play. What's going to happen here, so uh, it's going to be zone coverage that the Pittsburgh Steelers are running, and this is something that really the Dolphins started doing kind of halfway through last year, and they do it so well, which is just kind of run these, uh, you know, play actions with quick passes. Tua is so good at this stuff. The receivers are so good at this stuff, uh, and, you know, these, these are plays that work just in general, so it all works out. Watch how right when this play begins, I'll show you how it works out instead of explain how it works out and then show you. Uh, you see that there's a receiver who's just wide open right here. So Tua runs the play action. You have Jalen Waddle who is wide open because of all the Pittsburgh players that moved in due to the play action. Now, they will be able to get back. You know, it's you're not gonna not just gonna stay there once you get fooled. You'll step back. But this is where Tua comes into play. Of Tua will get rid of the ball immediately. I mean, as you see, that ball was out of Tua's hands in under two seconds, and Waddle was able to pick up 20 yards on there that play. It was a second down and 19, and they picked up a first down. So these are the types of plays that Miami is just able to do, and a big part of it is by having a guy like Jalen Waddle, who is just incredible at being able to get open quickly and get plenty of yards after the catch. Of course, Tua is great at this stuff, and you have to play call, you know, play calling has to be good. You have to be able to get guys to fall for the run fake and, you know, all that definitely checked out. I thought this play is another kind of example of, again, Tua doing a very good job of, it's going to be a play action. You have a tight end running over the middle and watch what happens. Look, Tua takes the snap, Tua runs the play action. Uh, there's actually about to be pressure, but it's okay because Tua can throw the football quickly, right? You see that there is a tight end who's about to get open, but this is, again, not the easiest of plays. It looks easy, and I think this is sometimes why Tua won't get enough credit for what he does well, because a lot of what he does well is kind of stuff that looks easy, but just because it looks easy doesn't make it easy. You have to make the throw right now, and you have to make it accurate enough for uh, your tight end, Mike Gusecki, to not just make the grab, but hopefully be able to pick up as many yards as possible after he makes the grab. However, as you see, that's exactly what it does. So, you know, very good stuff there from Tua. Very good stuff, again, by everybody involved. I won't say that every single time. Uh, there's a good play. But yeah, very good stuff there by the Miami Dolphins. A play like this is another good example of just kind of the, the little things Tua can do eff effectively, where it's a zone coverage play. It's quarters coverage. You're once again looking towards Jalen Waddell. Uh, again, Pretty good guy to look towards. You have him running a route over the middle and watch what happens. Tua takes the snap. Tua is going to run a play action. And at this point, you see how, okay, there is a gap in coverage right in this instant, but it would be tough, right? Waddle's already kind of going past it. Waddle's going to try to go to the next gap, which would be closer towards the top of the screen, which I think is the correct move by him. That's also what his route is. However, the Steelers don't know this. They're looking at Tua. They're paying attention to Tua. So for Tua, making sure that he doesn't just immediately look to where he wants to look towards, staying a little bit patient is freezing these two players here. And in fact, the uh, the middle linebacker on this play, watch him kind of drift back to and towards the bottom of the screen. And that was Devin Bush. And you were able to, you know, make that window just even bigger to hit Jalen Waddell. So again, it's just Tua understanding how to use his eyes, right? Tua has been very good at this stuff. That's why he was you're going to be drafted first overall probably until he got injured and why he was still drafted fifth overall even after a bad injury is because he did this stuff really well at Alabama and he's continuing to do it well at the NFL level which is expected. Going over to this play maybe the best thing Tua has done this season the biggest area he has improved as he has now improved every year he's been in the league I think the biggest area he improved is something like this which is you know I feel like I've talked about this before but it's because it's true is you, you if you remember Tua's first season when Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua were kind of splitting time one of the things that Fitzpatrick said that Tua needs to do a better job of is throw to guys who are NFL open not Alabama open throw it to guys who are aren't just, you know, wide open like he would get at Alabama. Sometimes you have to find a way to throw it to guys who don't appear to be open, but there actually is still a way to get them to catch the football. On this play, it's going to be a cover two man. So typically you just want to find a matchup that looks good and look in that direction. And obviously 
hopefully there'll be separation there so you can feel good about making the throw before you make it. Right when this play begins, it's not going to be Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle or Mike Gusecki that Tua is even looking towards on this play, interestingly enough. This is Trent uh, Sherfield who he is looking towards, but again, the name on the back of the jersey does not matter. All that matters is who is the best matchup to throw to, and Tua likes this matchup. You see that while Tua actually isn't even looking in that direction just yet, uh, this is what Tua is going to see right when he does. When he does look in that direction, uh, the, uh, Sheffield is off screen, but uh, you know, in this scenario, Sherfield is a little bit past the defender who is covering him, meaning that the defender has to run basically as fast as he can to try and catch up. So he is not going to be able to turn back and look at the ball uh, at any point. He has to solely play the receiver. And because of that, Tua can put the ball in a different direction to where you know his receiver can adjust to it, whereas the Pittsburgh defender cannot. Watch as when Tua does throw one over the middle, it is complete and they are able to pick up a big gain right there. That's just a smart play from Tua. It really was. Tua did a good job of knowing exactly how to how to work this situation and how to put the ball where he should put the ball. Listen, it was not a flawless day. This is an example of not a flawless play. It's going to be a, I didn't really mean to make that rhyme, but I decided to go with the rhyme uh, last second. Don't know why, but let's just move on. Uh, it's going to be a man coverage play. Uh, and, you know, I just saw he missed a couple throws. Again, Quarterbacks miss throws. It's football. You're never going to be perfectly accurate, but I thought he missed a couple throws. This was one of them where it's a cover two man. You see the route to the tight end that can get open here. It's, you know, I get why he wants to look in this direction. As you see, Tua is going to look down the field. He fires down the field. That one could have been intercepted, possibly should have been intercepted. I mean, that was very dangerous. So, you know, got away with one there, which again, it's football. It does happen, but that's a, you know, that was a dangerous play. Or this one, which I won't break down, but you know, this was, I mean, this would have been a backbreaking interception had uh, it been intercepted. So this was definitely, a, you know, again, these aren't these terrible throws. These wouldn't be the worst interceptions in the world if they were intercepted, but, uh, you know, they wouldn't be the best interceptions in the world if they were intercepted. I mean, they're, they're plays that Tua has to be a little better at. So again, it's okay. You can think that Tua had a, you know, had a good game and is a solid player without thinking that he had a perfect game. And I, I feel like that's sometimes the discourse with Tua it feels like there's no room for saying he's like a solid player but has some issues, which I feel like is the case. It's a tough place, throwing off balance on this one, and you know maybe probably just one where he should have just uh, thrown the ball away potentially or slid down instead of instead of taking that chance. So yep, yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.